Welcome back to Seattle, <laughs> well, Bob. Thank you, Tom. You it's good to been, be in Seattle. You haven't uh, been gone long. Most people in this town of a certain age, especially my age, uh, sort of a, a middle-aged baby boomer types, yep. you are famous for your almost live uh, contributions. Uh, the uh, the sort of the, did you the, say famous or infamous? <laughs> well, a little, a little bit yeah, of both. Okay. <laughs> I think so. Uh, but the, the, that's not why we're bringing you into. This oh. is not a nostalgia trip. Oh, this actually, yeah. okay. it's it's a. I, I want to sate my curiosity about mm -hmm. how a guy like you, from almost life, suddenly finds himself the recipient of all sorts of rave reviews and award nominations and the like for this new, your first screenplay that's come mm -hmm. to life on the big screen called Nebraska. First I, up. Yeah, I, have, I was going to say, I have no idea. Okay. So, so I, it was good talking to you. You're Thank you very much. You're a surprise. You sound a lot like the characters in Nebraska, to tell you the truth. So I just want to get, I sort of want to set the stage. First off, yep. uh, speaking of, uh, in, in addition to all these rave reviews the uh, the movie has been getting, I, uh, the movie has like got the second most nominations for Independent Spirit Awards, my favorite uh, movie awards of, uh, of, the, of the lot, and you got a nomination for Best First Time Screenplay. So I just want to ask you, before we even start talking about the movie, how do you feel like the most fortunate guy around? I mean, how, how, how do you feel about this kind of great luck? Uh, everyone in Hollywood is very quick to remind me that this never happens. That you're the luckiest man on the planet. Yeah, so I'm reminded daily. Yeah, I and my see. wife reminds me daily, and uh, <laughs> everybody else. So no, I, I was very fortunate. Enough, yeah. enough already with yeah. the luck reminders, yes. then, right? <laughs> okay. Well, I, I mean, I, there's so many ways uh, we can start with this, but I think let's let's start with you. This is a script, a long time coming, and a movie that took forever to come to the big screen. So first off, just talk about the genesis of the idea of the movie. What gave you the idea of writing a screenplay and what it was like to go through. I don't know if you consider what happened to your movie development hell or not, <laughs> but certainly it took like a decade, I understand, to bring this uh, movie to fruition. Right. Well, I mean, the idea came while I was still on Almost Live. I'd heard about people actually going across the country with uh, sweepstakes notices because they were afraid to put them in the mail. And they would show up at, at the office uh, with that in tow. And I just had that kernel of an idea. And uh, it, what really helped me to start writing that was when they canceled Almost Live and fired me. So, you know, that... Uh, when you they know, close a the door, yeah, they open a window, right? Being unemployed really can uh, spur you on to write that screenplay, finally, that you've been talking about. Uh, but, yes, after I wrote it, uh, uh, after Alexander Payne became involved, uh, uh, he was attached right away ten years ago. Is that right? So in a way, I didn't have to go through development hell. It's just waiting for him to to shoot it. Okay. Well, yeah. that, 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 uh, I don't want to rub this idea of you being just sh lucky too hard because you clearly put a lot of work into it. But how lucky is it to get a name <laughs> director like Alexander Payne, who uh, people know him primarily? I mean, Election is a, is a, a lot of people have fond memories of Election, but I think Sideways was the movie that really put him on the map. He did About Schmidt with uh, oh, yeah. Jack Nicholson. His most recent film was The Descendants with George Clooney. I mean, this guy is an established name in American cinema, and he latches on to a first-time screenplay? How did that happen? Well, uh, I was doing a show here for Bill Nye called Eyes of Nye at uh, PB, you know, PBS show, uh -huh. and a producer named Julie Thompson came up to work on it, and she read the script. Uh, I'd already written it at that point, right before I started with Bill. And she said, I know this guy as uh, a producer through a charity board, and he's doing movies like this. Uh, do you mind if I show it to him? It turned out it was the producer of Election. Wow. That Alexander Payne yeah. directed. So that was his first film. I but think. they sent him the uh, Alexander the script just saying, uh, do you know any young up-and-coming directors from the Midwest perhaps, and maybe you want to be an executive producer on this and help us uh, shepherd this through the process, yeah. and he's called them up and said, I'd like to shoot it, but not right away. Wow. <laughs> well, that's great, though. So let's, I think the one thing, in case people haven't seen the movie, it's getting rave reviews, but it's not one of these huge 
box office sensation. Right. It's, it's yeah. getting a lot of critical attention. Yeah, Why it's not going to be 3D IMAX. Right. Yeah, yeah. right. At least maybe for the 25th anniversary <laughs> maybe, edition. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So why don't you give us just a quick sort of a pricey of what the, the plot or the basic idea behind Nebraska is. Okay, so Bruce Dern uh, plays Father Woody Grant, and he gets one of these notices, uh, sweepstakes notice. Uh -huh. And uh, he is a uh, long-time uh, functioning alcoholic, uh, maybe entering um, early dementia. He's a very confused person, and he gets this, and he, uh, like like I'd heard in the news, uh, uh, thinks he won and insists on going to the office, and his family's fed up with him, and uh, his son, played by Will Forte, uh, finally gets fed up and decides to drive him there to show him that he didn't win. Right, yeah. So in a nutshell, that's it. That's now, it. the movie that you wrote, 10 years down the line with Alexander Payne, tinkering with it and casting it all. Now, does the movie look to you like you imagined it a decade ago? It's, it's a, uh, yeah, it's it's amazing how close it is. To really? What I wow. Hoped. Because he is from Nebraska, he knows those people, uh, and he did a year of scouting for locations and the uh, people that are in the film in, in the smaller roles. Uh, so uh, he had it down. I mean, he, he did his own rewrite on it since he's a writer himself yeah. of course so uh, uh, he did a rewrite which was great uh, he added a, a lot of nice things to it so uh, uh, yeah it's it's uh, I, I don't think there's probably anyone else who could have come as close to what I had in my mind. Okay, one of the most striking things about, we'll, we'll get to Bruce Dern's uh, amazing performance, one of the most striking things about the movie when you first see it is it's in black and white. Now, mm -hmm. I can't imagine <laughs> that you envisioned black and white when you were putting the screenplay My together. first description was a, a truck rolls down through the golden uh, wheat of uh, Nebraska. So, no, I didn't. <laughs> I I, uh, yeah, I didn't have black and white. And the other thing is, you know, I'm an out-of-work out writer, so writing a script for Hollywood and saying, no, this has to be shot in black and white, yeah. is probably not the best idea either. It, it so, narrows your options. Yeah, yeah. So you don't want to put that in your script. You no, know, that all came from Alexander. He'd always wanted to do a black and white. And he said when he read the script, the austerity of the people and how they talk and, and you know, the landscape all suggested black and white. Yeah, wow. And did that first throw your mind in the kind of a... Um, a wrench position. I mean, it seems that seems yeah. pretty striking. My mind was immediately split. <laughs> Half of it was, "This is fantastic. It'll look like a classic old movie." Yeah. There are no cell phones or computers in it, so it'll have this timeless feel. Yeah. And the other half was thinking box office. Yeah. yeah nobody's yeah. going to come is this, to see yeah. this. <laughs> what is this going to do? I'll have no. the first and only <laughs> Alexander Payne flop on my on my head. That, yeah. <laughs> And that every time he brought out another movie since then, you know, yes. about Schmidt came out and yeah. Sideways and Descendants. Yeah, every, yeah, with each one, it was, oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> What's going to happen the one? now? Yeah. And again, this is my last question about Alexander yeah. Payne. Did you guys get together in a room and kind of talk things over, or was this all done, you know, through email or phone conversations? How did you guys collaborate? Well, uh, Right after he became involved, we had a meeting, and he gave me some notes, and I did my rewrite. And after that, it was all in his hands, and he would uh, tinker with it. Uh, he did a, a couple of uh, passes on it, I think, and with each one, he'd send it to me and ask my thoughts, and I'd email yeah. him back. And did so. you have a rapport with him? I mean, do, I don't know what your relationship is like with Alexander Payne. Do you say, no, listen, Alex, you're way off. This is not going to work. <laughs> or were you deferential? How, how would you describe the relationship? I would relationship? say deferential because uh, I was actually afraid at a certain point to make suggestions because he's so good at casting and he's so good at writing. Uh, I, I thought, well, let him take it and run with it. And it, it was nice when he'd ask my thoughts and I tried and even be careful what I threw out there. Uh -huh. uh, but I really... You know, and he's one of the few, I have to say, admit, uh, directors in Hollywood where I would say that. You know, you take and run with it and, yeah. and make it into an Alexander Payne movie. Yeah, you know. and, you're, and you're fine with the, the finished product, I trust. I am, yeah, more than fine. <laughs> yes. when, when we started out, it was going to be a, a $2 million movie uh, directed by some unknown uh -huh. that would show at a film festival, go to DVD. Right. Uh, and now, you know, it's, it's this. So, yeah. yeah, it's pretty special. 